Hey, what's going on, damn it? Uh, back here, gonna do another little video, and as you may notice, hopefully, I have a new video setup. It's the same camera, but it's on a little bit of a pedestal here, kind of mounted, so it's not so far away, so you can get in much closer to the action. So this is kind of a, a trial run on this, but I figure while I'm doing this, I might as well do something constructive with my time as well. What we're gonna do today uh, is we're gonna do uh, some simple bases, and by simple bases, I mean something that you're going to do for lots of troops, something that's going to be relatively easy to crank out, and you can get a lot done. Okay, Now, all these bases I'm going to do without the miniature actually on them, there are two modes of thought in this. You can either do it without and then glue it, the miniature right on top, or you can do it the opposite way, obviously put the miniature down and then um, uh, build around it. Either way works. They both have their advantages and disadvantages. For this, we're just going to do the bases, so we're going to... Uh, just use these. I got a 20 mil and two 25s here. I also got a big in here. Now I will do another video on how to do more complex bases. Um, and if you guys ask real nice, I will show you how to do the lava base as well. And I'm going to do two of the larger bases, but that's a, a different one, a uh, different program. But let's go over the stuff that we're going to need to do. It, okay, you don't really need a lot. Uh, starting off, you're going to need glue. Okay, uh, this is just normal craft glue. All right, you're going to need some water. Um, you're going to need some stuff, and by stuff I mean you're going to need different things you want to put in or on top of your base. You can get very extravagant in some things, and here's some stuff here from Army Painter. This is a summer undergrowth. Um, I'm saving this for a different special project I do, in fact one of my commissions. Um, this is neat stuff. I'm not really going to go over this because this is a little it's situational. Okay, just talk about normal bases here. There are static grasses out there that you can get, and you can see these are $4.99 a pop. Okay, these are um, Gale Force 9, I think is the name of the guys who make these, if I'm not uh, mistaken. You could also get uh, pre made tufts, and I got a whole bunch from Army Painter. Uh, these are five bucks, these right here are about the same amount. Obviously, they go a lot further on this. The difference with the tough cell, and they come in different sizes. You see, this one right here says millimeter, six millimeter. That means the longest strand is six millimeter, but there are lots of different uh, lengths actually on each tuft. And you can see here as I kind of hopefully see it's you know it, it's pretty varied, and it gives you know, and it's also uh, different colors are in here too. It's a really nice effect. I do like the tufts a heck of a lot. Um, doesn't go as far as this. Now with this stuff right here, the Gale Force 9 or the normal static grass is all the same, all the same length. Okay. So this gives you a more uniform look, this gives you a more varied look. They both have their purposes and they can be used together. Static grass comes in different colors. You have green here. I mean they have like summer, usually but you know the, the, the seasons, the so summer, fall, winter, so on and so forth. And this right here is um, uh, parched straw which has like uh, little pieces of cut up sponge sort of into it that gives it a neat effect. All right, so static grass. You're also gonna need, some people like to use flock. I'm not a big fan of flock uh, per se, but uh, I am a big fan of ballast. So there are many different ways you can go on your ballast, all right? Uh, you can either get sand. This is just a, uh, a mix right here that I picked up at a local hobby store. Uh, it is, in fact, just sand. It's got a few bigger pieces in there for a little bit of, of variance. Okay, this works just fine. Um, you can also have a bigger size ballast. Here we go. You can see that has a bigger uh, aggregate in it. The difference ahead, these are actual rocks, okay? So this is a uh, ballast, it's actual rocks that you pick up at the hobby store. This is usually done when you intend to do a certain color scheme. If this is paintable, so to speak. Okay, so use this one. You want to paint things, um, and you want to do uh, some sort of uh, maybe transition in colors or something like that. Very, very basic stuff right here. This is very, very cheap. Okay, um, uh, it has its purposes, and we're going to use some of it today. Okay. Um, or you can go out and you can get some pre-made uh, ballast. Okay, so I have three ones here. Now these are not made out of sand. This is coffee grounds or something like that. And here I have ash gray. Okay, this is just a. Uh, uh, it's kind of hard to describe. It just kind of looks like a 
uh, a mess in there, but again, it, it gives a certain effect. And here's some uh, some real. This is flock, for lack of a better word. This is moss green, okay. And then you have a little bit bigger stuff that's brown. It's kind of supposed to be rocky stuff. In either case, these really don't get painted. You can mix them up, and I have before with uh, or added it to other things and mixed them up to give different, very messy effects. But generally speaking, what you do is you put glue down, you pop this on top, and bam, you're done. All right? has its purposes, especially when you're doing lots of miniatures. These come in very handy. Last and not least, you're going to need rocks. You can go uh, certain ways. You can buy this stuff right here. Uh, again, I, Army Painter, by the way, makes really good basing material, so I highly recommend them. Uh, these are cork rocks. They're just bigger pieces of cork, and then you just paint them uh, whatever color you want, gray or whatever, and you got rocks. Or you can go get uh, slate. Now, I know Games Workshop actually sells, no kidding, slate, but what you can do is you can go, and I think I've said this before, you can go to, say, Home Depot or Lowe's or any place like that. Go to wherever they sell the slate at. Chances are they're going to have a little piece that sheared off onto the ground. Okay. Um, ask the guy, don't steal it, ask the guy, hey, can I have that little piece? And you only need something about that big, right? About that big. About that thick, maybe, you know, a half an inch thick or a you know, centimeter thick. Take it home, put it in a plastic bag, and beat the living piss out of it with a hammer. And you're going to get little pieces of slate. All right? And this is obviously free. Uh, well, if they let you have it, it's free at least. And you really don't need to paint it all that much. Now, you can do things like dip it in water and clean it up and stuff like that. Sometimes it's, it's better as it comes. Sometimes you need to uh, wash it. In either case, if I go down to the bottom, you can actually get quite small pieces out that, you know, there we go. Those are pretty small. All right. So those are all the materials you're going to need. Um, I recommend, as well as a cup. Okay. Um, this is a line. You get this from Hobby Stores. Lined with a uh, some sort of um, plastic. It's non-permeable, so nothing will soak into it. You'll need that. Like I said, you're going to need some water. You're going to need a brush. I, you can use a dry brush, and this is my dry brush right here, an older one. So I will be using uh, this one, or you can use really just about anything, but you want a brush that's rather stiff that's going to hold up. You don't want a real flawed one because as you put glue down, which is what this is going to be used for, uh, you don't want it kind of getting all over the place. All right, so let's dive right in, guys, exactly how do you get this done, okay? First one is going to be your glue mix. Oh, by the way, again, I have these three, okay? We're going to do a very basic one. We're going to do a mixed one with uh, the sand painted over, okay? And then we're going to do one that's with different combinations of things. So very, very basic. Uh, technique one, that's going to be a little more complicated. And tech two, technique two is going to be a little more complicated. The first thing you have to learn to do is mix your um, white glue up. Okay, So yes, you do have to mix this. You start off by just putting a little bit. And uh, <laughs> that figures. Pull the plug out. Very unprofessional. Very sorry, guys. I should have had that prep. I had everything else prepped, but not this. Okay. So anyway, going in, and I'm just putting, uh, I don't know what that is, about three drops worth of glue. Okay. I'm not sure what the ratio is. Start off with about two to one. That's for every two drops of glue, one drop of water, and you're going to mix it up, and you want it basically just trying to loosen this up. Some glues you don't need to do this to. Some come, you know, uh, a little bit thinner. You basically just thin it out. You don't want it too thin, okay? But you definitely don't want it too thick. And I think that looks right about okay. So stay on your brush, shouldn't really go anywhere. Uh, but you don't want it to be so goopy that when you put it on, you can't spread it around. All right. Base number one. Here we go. Take the glue. I'm going to use those later. Take the glue, and you're just going to spread it on rather thick, okay? And you do want it to be a little gloppy here and there. Try and get all the way to the ends. Just make sure it's 100% covered. All right, pretty easy. Easy enough so far. Then you're going to take whatever ballast that you want or whatever color that you want, and you're just going to dunk it in. Okay, we'll do a very basic one here with the green. Okay, and again, this can be uh, definitely done in large quantities. 
Um, sometimes you may want a little uh, container or something so when you put this stuff in you shake it up you're not making a mess all over the place. But anyway, just put it in and this is why you want a good amount of glue on there. Okay, And when you pull it off you'll be able to see the places that you missed. Uh, but there is a trick for that. I'll see what it is here in a second. What I do at least. Alright, so there you go. The base has been set. The majority of the base has been covered. Remember, if you're doing this, the miniature is going to go in the middle, so you want to concentrate detail on the outskirts of things. Okay? Now, you can use super glue if you wish. You can use uh, the, the normal white glue that we have here. Uh, whatever you like. Uh, I tend to use super glue just because I don't like to wait for white glue to dry while I'm putting on some of the detailed stuff. So uh, any kind of gel will do just fine. I'm going to put a little bit right there. Okay. And then come in with our piece of slate. And again, if you're doing lots and lots of miniatures, this would be the way to go. Pop it down. Okay. Now, the other thing is going to, we're going to do a little bit of static grass. All right, so we're going to make a tuft of static grass. We're going to do that, and I'm going to, again, pick a place that's where it's going to be away from where the miniature is going to go, because you have to figure as you're putting this guy down, whatever he is, and this is a square base, so it'd be fantasy. But again, they're usually one foot forward, one foot back, or they're even, but kind of keep it out of the middle. Um, so we have that uh, right there, and for a little bit of contrast, you can pick a static grass that has different colors in it, like this one does here. Scale Force 9, I think this is the, um, this is just green, but you see there's different shades of green that are actually in there, right? So the way that you do static grass, get up, try not to make a huge mess, okay? You're going to take more than you think you need, okay? A lot more than you think you need. Put it down, okay? And take another little bit. And take it down and then press it down into the base and do that a few times. This ensures that there are lots of connections. Okay, tap it off. There you have your little tuft. Okay, now what I like to do is I wait just a few seconds, and since the super glue is going to dry very quick, once I wait a few seconds, turn away and blow over it lightly. I'm not going to do this on camera because then all my static grass can go everywhere. And there is a little base. Okay. Very, very basic. Okay. Very basic, but it definitely works. Um, can you go a step further? You absolutely can if you wanted to, just to kind of. Uh, liven things up a little bit. I would recommend doing it with a um, some sort of um, end of a paintbrush maybe would do a good job. Um, so if I take my piece here, that uh, my brush that I used to actually put the stuff down, take a little bit more glue, I'm going to find a place that looks a little barren. It looks a little barren over here. Okay, Make a good spot. You want it to be rather um, together. I mean, don't do like a dab here, a dab there, stuff like that. Do a little bit so that, but make sure it's all connected. Okay, that looks good. And then go in with a different color ballast. All right, so I'm going to use the Battlefield Brown here. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to dunk that side of the base in. And press it a little bit. Same thing, turn away, blow on it. And there we go. Okay. Real simple, easy little base to, to do. All right. And uh, you'll find that when you do static grass, you're going to get static grass everywhere, as you may or may not be able to see here. All right. And hopefully, if I bring this up, we will focus. Yes. No. Where if I put my hand, it should focus. There we go. All right, just remember how close this is too, okay? So we are very, very close. We're going to see a lot of the ugly details of miniature painting, but if we pull it away, not too bad, huh? Okay, that's base number one. I think we're already 15 minutes into it, so I'm probably going to go for an intermission. Uh, probably split this up into 
a few different um, few different segments. All right. So we'll come back here for part two.